The door between life and death swings both ways. Now, you are one of us. What's going on everybody, this is DK Dynamite, and today we're going to be talking about the return of the Chaos Story, but with a twist, the huge implications of Shinonuma Reborn, and how they've already set up Black Ops 2024. Definitely stay tuned, but before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and make sure you have notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold Warrior 2, Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, Vanguard, and any other future Call of Duty as well. Now I apologize if my voice sounds a bit off in this commentary, we did two long streams yesterday with a little bit of a gap in between, but we streamed Shinonuma Reborn as it released earlier in the afternoon then did a separate stream at night going ahead and playing fortune's keep and taking part in the brand new mercenaries of fortune event my voice is shot but we got plenty of videos to put together for the rest of this week so stay tuned for all of that but thank you for all the support on the live streams whether it was in the comments super chats it really means the world to me but first and foremost you know reborn is in my opinion the best iteration of the map itself the map just feels complete and i mean we haven't really had an iteration of the map in the past that featured a full main quest or anything close to a boss fight a bunch of side easter eggs this map just feels amazing i have a separate video planned for later this evening talking about everything you missed in the map in terms of easter eggs because new ones are being found as we speak so plenty to talk about in that video coming up tonight but this map truly shows the power of zombies on the modern warfare engine which i'm really a fan of i think people's distaste for vanguard will automatically stain their opinion of this map but if you weren't expecting this map to quote unquote save vanguard or save the zombies community I think you'll definitely have a fun time if you were itching for some new zombies content. There is a lot to offer here in this map. And I think it is hard for people to understand or comprehend what this project is, right? What is Vanguard Zombies? Because people will automatically jump to the conclusion that I'm just a fanboy or that I'm defending corporations. But no, no, no. You have to understand that this is definitely a very limited zombies experience from Treyarch. And although Activision went ahead and marketed this as like a full-fledged Treyarch such hammer crossover and marketing this as a new zombies mode as if it were completely complete i get that that was wrong and people out there do feel a bit scammed but if you understand the circumstances of how this mode was made then you'll know that this is really just a bonus essentially considering it a live beta of sorts for black ops 2024 zombies as Treyarch is learning the modern warfare engine for the first time this is kind of what they're experimenting with what they're working on and this is something that we can experience which also furthers the dark ether narrative now i know you can argue that and say well you paid full price for vanguard yet zombies feels incomplete i totally get that i'm not going to disagree with you but if you guys are just like, hey, I want some extra zombies content and you don't want to consider this just an off year where Sledgehammer or Infinity Ward are working on like a Spec Ops or a different survival mode. If you're like, hey, I wish there were zombies this year. Well, there is and there's something to be offered here in this experience if you give it a shot. Now, that's not to excuse the shortcomings of Vanguard or the fact that Sledgehammer just couldn't for some reason come up with their own ranked play or a third mode for the game. So Treyarch had to clutch up for them yet again. It's not excusing that at all. But if you guys are like, hey, I want some more zombies content. I want a new easter egg to do then there is something for you in shinonuma reborn the map looks gorgeous gameplay feels smooth and i can't even imagine how much better their next black ops zombies will be when they have actual three-year development time to work on the modern warfare engine but now when it comes to the good stuff i'm sure you guys already heard this radio and i'm not going to play the entire thing in full but here's the beginning of it which obviously blew our minds yesterday when we first played the map it reminds me of when i studied the writings of alistair rhodes an amateur demonologist and personal hero of mine. Rhodes wrote about different objects of power that he called sentinel artifacts, but I was never able to find out exactly what they were. Nevertheless, if we can find the relic we seek at Shinonuma, I am quite certain I can use it on Von List and trap court effects in that little scepter of his. Now, I don't think anybody out there had a chaos mention on their bucket list for 2022. I don't think anybody out there could have assumed that Treyarch would even acknowledge chaos ever again, considering the departure of Jason Blundell, who co-wrote the chaos story alongside Craig Houston. But don't forget, Craig Houston is still over at Treyarch and is still the man in charge of the writing. So I think at this point going forward, 
Greg Houston has every right to either revisit or retcon parts of the Chaos story. Now, the question is, is this a different version of Alistair Rose that exists in this new rebooted universe, the Dark Aether story? Did Tagger Toten's ending collapse the Chaos universe as well and kind of merge that all together with everything else and then created this new rebooted Dark Aether timeline? Or do the events of Chaos somehow take place in the same timeline as this new universe and kind of act as almost a prequel to what we've seen with Vanguard zombies and then Cold War zombies. I mean, it's been pointed out that Prima Materia and Dark Aether Crystals do look identical. Now, is that on purpose or is it just a coincidence that they ended up having kind of the same raw form or the same raw look that just happens to be in two back-to-back -back Black Ops games without any real connection? I mean, maybe that does mean something more than anybody out there could have anticipated. Now, I put out this tweet last night, which I think you guys should definitely take a look at. So, as I said, the folks that are looking back for proof that Chaos can't possibly be canon and remind me of people pointing out quote-unquote plot holes with the original trilogy in Star Wars because of today's new stories. Sometimes stories evolve, things are retconned, and writers improve on the original source material. I mean, I see it all the time, right? People out there, they go ahead and watch some of the animated Star Wars series like Clone Wars or Rebels, or they go ahead and watch Mandalorian or Obi-Wan, and they try to go back to the original trilogy and say, hey, this doesn't line up, this doesn't make sense, it's a plot hole, right? There's this bad writing, what's going on? George Lucas, what the hell? And I'm like, hold on a second, do people understand that when the original scripts are written for Star Wars in the 70s and in the 80s, there was definitely some foundation set up for future stories to be told, but when new stories are told today, obviously things aren't going to perfectly line up, but the writers always do their best, and yes, there are retcons, and yes, things sometimes evolve to mean something more than they originally did, and I think people out there that understand Star Wars are fully aware of that, right? Nothing's going to be perfect, but it reminds me right now of people out there that are going back to interviews of Blundell talking about how chaos is not canon at all and it's separate, and I definitely understand that, right? You have every right to pull that up. I'm not criticizing you for doing that, but I just want to make sure that you guys have an open mind about how things could change now, now that Blundell is gone and Craig is in charge full-time, and how chaos could possibly be revisited in some way, shape, or form. So I want to blow your minds a little bit, and thanks to Cal Jitsu and Eric Maynard, storyline experts of the Zombies community, and they have been for years, there's something that I want to dive into that I'm sure they'll cover a lot more in-depth once they kind of wrap their thoughts around this more thoroughly, and they'll probably post videos over the next few weeks, but what if this entire time, the Chaos story was always meant to be a part of the Dark Aether story, but not the original Aether story itself, and you're like, wait, what does that mean? Well, we do have Eric Maynard and Cal Jitsu, who actually had a conversation about this a couple of weeks ago, coincidentally, just before we'd actually get confirmation of such a connection here in Shinonuma Reborn. Now, on June 8th, Cal went ahead and wrote a message to Eric saying that this is a bit of a crazy theory, but that it's possible. So for those that don't know, in a branch of Greek mythology and philosophy known as Orphism, the idea was, at the beginning of all things, two forces were birthed, chaos and ether, along with a cosmic egg, but that's not totally relevant here, the two were equal and opposite. The ending of ether was always going to be a banishing of everything into the dark ether, and the dark ether as a concept was introduced sparingly in Black Ops 3, and gradually rose to prominence throughout the season of Black Ops 4, with the idea that it was a place everything went after ether, but importantly, it already existed. Given the coyness at the start of Black Ops 4 about how the ether and chaos stories may or may not be related, and specifically, the whole idea in the first place of having seemingly two unconnected stories in one game, Black Ops 4, I believe that the original idea was that the chaos story was the dark ether, and the end game of the first chapter of chaos would have been revealing that it was in the dark ether itself, effectively a hard reboot and sequel to ether at the same time. Chaos wasn't really received well, and by the time he got to Cold War, Treyarch decided to do the Dark Aether saga in the format we now know, but given the setup there was, I really believe Chaos was the original Dark Aether story, as would be indicated by the mythology Blundell was clearly implying. Now it's obviously a separate thing, I do not believe there is any relation, and I also doubt it will ever be continued, which frankly, I'm fine with, but I'm really starting to believe that what I've speculated here was the original intent had it continued. So I'm sure that probably made you guys sit in your chair for a second, or wherever you are right now, and you're like, hold on a second, this changes everything, and yes it does. Now, I will point out, if you're a major Chaos fan, but are a little bit upset now that it might be connected to Ether, don't worry, because you know Craig Houston is the GOAT and will not ruin either the Ether or Chaos storylines just for the sake of having them cross over. You know he has a time and place for everything. He's gonna make sure that when he reintroduces somebody or something, it'll be at the right time. So have faith in Craig, have faith in Treyarch, and just know that whatever was kind of implied now with Shinonuma isn't probably gonna be kind of touched on again until the next Black Ops game, which by then, they'll have plenty of time to really think things out and ensure that neither one of these stories are stained if they are in fact connected. Now the question is, are they just going to be reusing characters from Chaos in a new Dark Aether 
character storyline, kind of like a soft reboot where you can have a new story being told with familiar characters, but in the same sense where the chaos story didn't really happen, they're just reusing those characters now for a better purpose. Now, Cal actually pointed out what could be three interpretations of this new radio. One, Rhodes' writings are his observations on the Dark Ether artifacts and relics that enter our world. Two, chaos was a part of the Etherverse and was folded in with all the other worlds by the end of Tag. Or three, chaos is wholly canon to the Dark Ether saga, with three being the most unlikely candidate here, as uh, Cal also pointed out over on Twitter. And I fully agree with this. I do think that at this point, one and two are very likely, but if three is true, which is that chaos is wholly canon, meaning that everything up to Ancient Evil took place right before uh, Vanguard Zombies and D-Machine, that would be a bit strange. It would be a little bit harder to convince people of. They'd have to do a lot of jumping through hoops to kind of make all that work. So I think at this point, we're not going to get really too many answers about what this means until either the next Vanguard Zombies map, which may have more radios referencing the chaos story, or I'll have to wait until the next Black Ops game when Craig ends up throwing in some more curveballs to really explain what happened to chaos altogether. Now, I'm sure you guys also noticed during the final step of the main Easter egg on Shinonuma, we do have a mirror, which does resemble the mirrors that we got to see during the chaos storyline, right? The artifacts from the four maps that are a part of that story. Now, I'm not saying that chaos invented mirrors and that if we ever see a mirror in zombies again, that it's automatically a chaos reference, but considering the Alistair Rhodes radio on Shinonuma, maybe that mirror does mean more than meets the eye and is in fact connected to something that has to do with our beloved chaos storyline. Now, as Cal brought up in a series of tweets, I'll quote, as Blundell said in a recent interview, or not recent, but a couple of years ago, chaos and ether share the same space. Then after an awkward few seconds of silence, Craig chimed in with disk space, haha. -ha. So he's convinced that the end game of chaos was that it was Dark Ether storyline. Obviously, that's not the current Dark Ether story, but maybe the original one they had planned during Black Ops 4. That's Cal's tweet. So maybe they are going to be revisiting that a little bit more throughout the next couple of Vanguard maps, if there are more than one, or it's being saved for the next Black Ops game. But I always think there is a possibility they somehow follow up on what happened at the end of Ancient Evil, even if it's just something as simple as like a radio or a cipher somewhere, which explains what happened. Or maybe none of that is relevant going forward and all that was just collapsed into the multiverse and means nothing. But this definitely is a classic case of appreciate what you have before it's gone. Because I've seen a lot of people out there that are like, oh, chaos was so good. It was so promising. And it would have been great to follow up on for like a year or two of Black Ops 4 or even in Treyarch's next game. I mean, it was classic zombies with a classic crew and hard Easter eggs. I'm like, all right, that's good that you think that. It's positive that you do. But where were all these people when Black Ops 4 was in its prime? Because as far as I know, nobody out there was defending chaos like that when Black Ops 4 was out, which ultimately led to its downfall. And now that Zombies has shifted to be more of a casual mode with easier easter eggs and playing as operators that you can also use in multiplayer in Warzone, people out there are realizing that Chaos was definitely something special. Now as I said earlier, Crack Houston is still there even if Blundell isn't, meaning you can always revisit Chaos one day in some way, shape, or form. At the end of the Black Ops 4 season, there were lots of rumors and leaks out there about what the future of Chaos was, and there were lots of maps planned, apparently for Library of Alexandria, the Pyramid of Giza, we had the Eye of Apophis melee weapon, which clearly was going to be a hint towards some future boss in a Chaos map. Clearly, that was going to be maybe a wonder weapon or a bonus item you can find in a future Chaos map. But considering that melee weapon was ready to go, but the zombie map wasn't, they just dropped that weapon into the black market instead. We had YouTubers that were flown out to go ahead and play Ancient Evil early, in which they said at the main menu of Black Ops 4, they saw references to more zombies maps that were not related to Ether at all, but for Chaos. Now, there is a bit of a tinfoil hat theory going around since... Since Kevin Drew, who works over at Treyarch and recently got promoted, so congrats to him again if he's ever watching this video, he responded to a tweet from the Gaming Revolution, and I'm surprised that he did, considering the circumstances around what happened a couple of years ago. Hopefully he doesn't get in trouble from Activision, but TGR went ahead and tweeted asking if Chaos should be included in an updated entire storyline video for zombies. Kevin Drew replied with Remaster COD Zombie Storyline Videos. People are assuming that that is kind of confirming that Chaos is important, and you should now include chaos in the entire Ether storyline videos if people ever make them again. And could just be him poking some fun at the zombies community and saying, hey, you know, we love seeing zombie storyline videos from people out there that are passionate about the game. Because at the end of the day, it is the community that puts together projects like that to help others understand the story of zombies. And if you're adding chaos into that mix now, that's going to make for well over a two, three, maybe even four hour video talking about everything that's happened from the very beginning, World at War, up until now now and a video like that typically needs to be updated like every other year and especially needs to be considering the new story 
implications of Vanguard zombies. Now, I'll end this video with this. Maybe the reason they started the Chaos story when they did, instead of just waiting until Ether was concluded, was because of what Cal suggested earlier, right? Essentially beginning the Dark Ether storyline simultaneously as the original Ether story was concluding so that one day we can all sit here in shock like we're doing right now because this whole time Treyarch got a golden plan that just wasn't allowed to be fulfilled because of unforeseen circumstances. Those circumstances being, you know, they have to clutch up for Sledgehammer and fix COD 2020, make it their own game. Their budget got cut from Black Ops 4 also as a result of the harsh community feedback because of the rough launch window. I mean, all those things put together just essentially put an end to whatever Treyarch had planned for Chaos. But now that they have time to say, okay, how do we really write a strong zombie story for the next Black Ops game? Maybe a part of that is saying, okay, let's revisit what was working with Chaos and what could still work with this new rebooted Dark Ether timeline. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the possible return of the Chaos storyline because of a radio here in Shinonuma? Would you want to see anything from Chaos return in a future Black Ops game? And also, what are your thoughts on the mind-blowing theory from Kaljitsu and Eric? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody. Oh, my God.